Ho ho baby, do we have a jam-packed video for tonight. We're going to go over a lot of companies that just reported earnings. We're going to break down their numbers, break down the stock charts, and talk about what I'm looking to do with these companies, these stocks. Am I buying? Am I selling? Am I holding? So if you guys find value, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. And don't forget to get up to 15 stocks from Moomoo, each up to 2000 bucks, and 12 stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited. Link down below. And with that being said, guys, cheers. Let's dive right into the video. So the first stock, the first company I want to break down is Costco, which you guys probably know. I've been eyeing up Costco for years at this point. I want to buy this stock, but I have not gotten the opportunity to do so. And now that I'm looking at it, we probably, well, I probably should have added a little bit when it fell to the low 400s, but of course I didn't do that. And here we are. I'm still looking to buy more. You guys probably, or not buy more, get into the stock. I want to, I want to own this company. I haven't been able to own them ever. Uh, you know, it's one of those companies, that, you know, one of those stocks that always trades at a premium. And you guys can see it did collapse about a year ago back in May, uh, you know, in the, in the middle of May of last year, it went from 612 all the way down to about, where did it bottom at? 400. That's probably where I should have bought some. Uh, but nope, I did not buy some on that 35% drop. And then it ended up rallying. And now we're pretty much in a wedge. You guys see the wedge here on the three-year chart on Costco. And when I saw it dump initially, guys, when the earnings came out, I was thinking to myself, maybe I should just nibble a little bit. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. But if it does start coming down maybe to the mid 400s, the way I'm thinking about this is, you know, it's one of those companies, again, that always trades at a premium. And I'm like, you know, the, the way I might, you know, the way I might have to get into this is by just simply dollar cost averaging on the sizable dips over time. And even though we're not at the best valuation right now, per se, uh, we're still down a lot from uh, from all-time highs. I believe the all-time high was, what, 612? We just looked at it, right? Uh, yeah, 612. Now we're at 486. So we are down around 20%. So we are in a bear market. You know, I mean, that's a decent drop. Of course, it's not 35% like we saw a year ago. Uh, but still, we're in a bear market. And I'm thinking... Maybe because they always trade at a premium. I feel like I can't ever get this stock at a, at a lower price. Maybe maybe it goes down lower in the future. I don't know. Uh, but maybe because of all those reasons... I should, uh, you know, I should just dollar cost average in. And I'm debating on that. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. But for sure, I'm thinking if it comes back down mid 400s, low 400s, I'm definitely going to get in. We'll see, though. Time will tell. So, of course, Costco reported earnings today after the bell. Looks like they ended up doing EPS of $2.93. Let me see if that beat the expectations. Let me see. What's the expectations on that? Um, I'm not seeing anything on that, but they did beat on revenue. Actually, no, they missed on revenue. 53.65 billion, which missed the 54.57. So maybe that is why initially the stock ended up going down. And I'm not sure if they beat on EPS, but overall, same store sales in the US were down 0.1%. In Canada, they were down. 0.1% or actually 1% rather as e-commerce same store sales were down 10%. And you guys probably know Costco does have, um, you know, e-commerce. You can go and you can order. I believe there's is it free shipping? I forget. I just got a Costco membership a couple months ago, guys. I'm not going to lie. I've never ordered online. Actually, maybe one time uh, my fiance does more, but I just go into the store and, and it makes sense that their revenue is down 10%. More people are going in the stores, you know, uh, as opposed to ordering online. Makes sense there. So it looks like here, U.S. same stores decline. Okay. Same with Canada down, uh, like I said, 1%. I'm not seeing anything here on guidance, but overall, guys, that's what's going on. You know, we, uh, we, we miss we, uh, we miss revenue. EPS came in at 293, and maybe tomorrow I'll dive deeper into the actual earnings report. So make sure to subscribe. We might dive into the earnings release, the you know the press release, all that good stuff, which might be you know a 10 15 minute video. I don't want to spend too much time on Costco in this video, but overall, right now it's unchanged. It closed at 486. Well, I guess it's down. Uh, it's down about a dollar, uh, but pretty much at break even right now after the bell. You know. And this is after we saw some volatility initially when the numbers came out. We went from 488 down to 470, back to 492. That was a pretty big move, 4% there. And again, now we're kind of you know consolidating, smoothing out at around 485, and we're at break even here after the bell. So that's Costco, guys, ticker symbol COST. We also have 
Ulta today, which was at all-time highs, I believe, heading into these earnings. So let me see what is happening. Holy crap, look at that. Ulta is now free-falling after the bell. They closed at 485, and now they're at 442. Oof, guys, that is a drop of 9%. 10% here on Ulta. That is a pretty sizable drop after the bell. And at one point, they were at 430. That's a drop of 12% on Ulta. Ugh, that's not good. So let me see what they ended up doing here. It looks like they did um, 688 EPS, which beat the 687. Okay, that beat. And sales also beat 2.63 billion versus 2.62 billion expected. So double beat there. And they actually raised their full year 23 outlook from 10.95 to 11.05. Now to, uh, it, it was from that to now 11 to 11.1 billion versus the 11.12. So, okay, guidance is a little bit under the estimate for full year 23 even though they actually raised their outlook. It's still under um, the estimate. And let me see, what do they got for EPS? They got full year 23 EP <coughs> EPS, excuse me, guys, of around 2470 to 2540 versus the 2535 expected. A little bit on the lower end there, on the lower end of the guidance under the uh, the estimate there. So that's not the best sign. Not the end of the world, but you know that's probably a reason why the stock is falling, at least in the short term. And again, this thing is down massively, guys. I mean, this thing's a falling knife right now. We're at a multi-month low. And you know we're now pretty much testing the lows from back in, when was this? The beginning? of the year not even actually the end of last year back in the end of december we hit around 4 30 4 40 that's where we are right now after the bell so alta's taking a beating and i mean guys this thing was up so much. It was at all-time highs. I mean, you got to realize this can't just go up, up, and away forever. This sell-off, you know, on the three-year chart is healthy. I mean, this thing went straight from to, you know, the last six months from 395 all the way up to 550. I mean, that is a massive move, 45%. So now it's pulling back a little bit. And to be honest... The, uh, the trend might continue for all we know. I mean, this thing, even though it's pulling back, it is still clearly holding trend here. So Ulta, let's see if buyers come in. Mind you, it's a falling knife right now, so keep that in mind. We might have to let the dust settle a little bit and uh, give, give it some time. But let's see if those buyers come in. They might. They might. We shall see, guys. And, of course, the next one that we have to go over, which you guys probably remember uh, they reported today, is Best Buy, ticker symbol BBY, which they ended up going up 3% on the day now. Not bad. And let me see what they reported. They actually reported, um, wait a second, did they report yesterday? Um, no, they were this morning. That's right. Okay, so they went from 68 bucks this morning to about 73 after they reported. That was a move of 7%. Pretty impressive there for Best Buy. And they ended up doing, let me see here, they did, where is it, guys? Give me a second. They did EPS of $1.15 that beat the $1.11 expected, but they missed on sales. $9.47 billion versus $9.5 Five two billion expected, so they beat EPS, missed on sales, and Q1 comparable sales. Are you ready for this, guys? Declined by ten percent, but they reaffirmed their full year twenty four guidance, and they see revenue of around forty three point eight to forty five point two billion for this year, um, and they see comparable sales down. 3 to 6%. All right, with full year adjusted EPS of 570 to about 650. All right, with capital spending of about 850 million dollars and mind you guys, EPS on an adjusted basis is down year over year. It's uh what was it at last year? A dollar 57 and it just came in at a dollar 15, so keep that in mind. Comparable sales are down 10%. EPS on an adjusted basis is down. They missed on revenue. Not the best numbers here for um, Best Buy, but still somehow, some way, guys, I'm not sure why. Maybe I'm missing something. This stock went up over 3% on the day, and that goes to show stocks can do whatever they want to do. And mind you, maybe maybe it's because this thing was already down $23. I mean, this thing was down about 26% heading into the earnings. Maybe a lot of that, you know, earnings, uh, you know, I don't want to say it was a disaster, but maybe the weak earnings were already priced in and the, the markets kind of rallied on maybe earnings not being as bad as they thought, you know, the stock thought. I don't know. Just throwing ideas out there, guys. But overall, that's what BBY, uh, BBY not to be confused with BBBY, which Bed Bath & Beyond went up 18% today. Pretty good day uh, for that one, guys. And one that did not have a good day. Are you guys ready for this? 
is Dollar Tree. Holy smokes, 12% drop for Dollar Tree today, guys. And talk about a fake out. I mean, this thing broke out. You guys probably remember above 157 which we cover that here on the channel. You know, we talked about how that was the high from the beginning of February. We broke out of it. That was nice. That was great. And we thought, well, at least I thought, it could make a move towards 165, 170. But nope, the markets had a different idea, which is why I never, ever, 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 ever buy or hold or, you know, sell. Well, maybe sometimes I'd sell. Uh, well, not even now because I'm not even buying. But I'm not buying before earnings. That's what I'm trying to get at, right? I don't buy calls. I don't buy puts. I don't do anything around a stock, you know, or around earnings on a stock, especially if I'm trading that stock. Now, of course, if it's a long-term investment, I'm not selling before every earnings season, right, guys? But if it's a trade, I'm not going to gamble through earnings. I'm just not because things like this could happen. Look, this company, this stock was at, what was it, 155 bucks last night, yesterday, guys, and now it's at, it hit 129 today. It dropped around 17% at its worst point point after earnings. That's why I never hold through earnings and I never gamble on earnings, even if it means I have to miss the move sometimes. Sometimes that happens and trust me, it is worth it because for the moves that you miss, you know, if let's say you were to get in a stock, you know, you could get screwed. It could work both ways, right? You have to realize it could go both ways. So they did adjusted EPS of $1.47, which missed the $1.52, okay? And sales came in at $7.32 billion, which beat the $7.28 billion. So mixed bag earnings there for Dollar Tree, but it's got to be the guidance, right? It's got to be the guidance. They see Q2 same-store sales up mid-single digits and anything else. They cut, there we go, they cut their full year 23 EPS outlook to $5.7. 73 to 613 from 630 to 680. Oh man, that was the original estimate. So they cut EPS full year 23. That's not good. And anything here on revenue, I'm not seeing anything on revenue, but gross margin is down 340 basis points to 30.5%. So that's shrinking. EPS guidance is getting cut. They missed on, um, what, was what was it, EPS? Yeah, they missed on EPS. So those are a couple of reasons why the stock ended up falling, 12% on the day. And at this point, guys, right now, we are at a big support, right around 135, which has held pretty much each time has tested, you know, over the past close to a year at this point, uh, more like eight months. Um, so yeah, let's see if that happens again. Let's see if buyers come in on Dollar Tree at around 135. It looks like we're kind of consolidating there. Let's see now if we can get the pop maybe towards 140, 145, maybe even higher. So Dollar Tree guys looks pretty, well, I don't want to say looks pretty good, but getting destroyed. It might be looking good if we start rallying here, which we're not doing that yet. But overall, we're watching that. I'm watching that. And by the way, have you guys have you guys gone up to 15 stocks yet for Moomoo? What, what are you waiting for if you haven't done that already? Use that link down below or simply go to stasurfest.com slash Moomoo. Link down below. And once you open up an account using that link, you get one free share of stock right off the bat and fund your account with at least $100, guys. You get four more stocks and fund your account with at least $1,000 are you ready for this? You get 10 more stocks, totaling 15 free stocks. So if you guys want to help out the channel and you want some free money, use that Moomoo link down below or go to stopsterfest.com slash Moomoo. It is greatly appreciated, guys. And you might as well get 12 more stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited. Also link down below. And with that being said, cheers, guys. I might have to get actually a little sip of this water because I'm not editing this video. And quite frankly, I'm freaking parched right now. Give me a second. Uh, man, I needed that. So, yeah, Dollar Tree down 12%. Let's see what else. Restoration Hardware, our age, is another one that reported. And I'm not sure if you guys saw, but I made a Warren Buffett video over the weekend, I believe. Um, When was that? Yeah, last weekend, I believe. And they ended up, or during that uh, video, we talked about how Buffett, I believe, sold out of all his restoration hardware. Let me actually pull it up. I made a TikTok on this too. By the way, go follow me on TikTok at Stasurfest. But either way, I think he sold out of all of it, which goes to show that he's kind of bearish on the economy, or at least, well, maybe not bearish on the economy, but he's taking risk off the table when it comes to a company uh, like Restoration Hardware, which um, they're furniture, right? They sell a bunch of furniture, other products. So I guess 
that could be a sign he's bearish on maybe the housing market. Maybe people are going to pull back on, um, you know, buying furniture. And that's, I guess you could say, more discretionary spending, right? Which is what we're seeing uh, with companies like Home Depot, Lowe's, Target, Walmart. More and more people are just buying essentials and they're cutting back on maybe buying that new couch, maybe buying that new cabinet or the new, I mean, I don't know, China closet or whatever the heck, China closet, whatever that crap's called. I don't know. Maybe they're doing that. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, but Buffett, again, is selling out of that stock completely. And this company reported today, and their stock is down about 8 bucks after the bell. And it went down 2% already on the day. So now it's down around 6% from where it closed yesterday. Not the best sign overall for Restoration Hardware. So it looks like they did $2.21 billion, or rather $2.21 EPS, which beat the 209 expected. And they ended up beating on... Sales, yes, 739 versus 726.5 million expected. Not too bad there. And it looks like here they um, raised their revenue guidance for full year to 3 billion to 3.1 billion. Not bad. And they guided for Q2 revenue of 765 to 775 million versus the analyst expecting um, expectation of 788 million dollars. Not bad there. Actually, that's under um, the estimate. So maybe that's why it is falling. And they raised their or actually lower their full year adjusted operating margin guidance to 14 and a half to 15 and a half percent. So RH is getting nailed right now after the bell and the chart is not looking so pretty on the four hour time frame. And to be honest, guys, this looks like it's on the verge of maybe collapsing. Maybe just maybe we shall see. It's not looking so great right now. We're looking a bit toppy here on the four hour time frame. And I believe we also had Marvell today. Let me pull it up. MRVL is the ticker. Holy smokes. Look at that move, guys. Oh my gosh. So this stock went up seven and a half percent on the day. And now look at it after the bell. Oh my God. It is up another 17, 18 percent. Sheesh, guys, look at that. I was not expecting that, I'll be honest. Uh, Marvell went from 45 bucks yesterday now to, what, $57 right now after the bell? It is up 26%. That is just freaking nutty. So let me see what they ended up doing. They ended up doing EPS of $0.31, cents, which beat the $0.29 cents expected, all right? And they beat on sales $1.32 billion versus $1.30 billion expected. So double beat there, and they see Q2 adjusted EPS of 27 to 37 cents versus 31 cents expected and net revenue of 1.33 plus or minus uh 5% versus the 1.31 billion expected not bad and overall guys uh, you know, on top of that, uh, or rather, not on top of that, but pretty good earnings, right? And one thing worth mentioning on top of that, there we go, that's what I wanted to say, this is extremely overbought, extremely overbought, way too overbought, so keep that in mind. I mean, if you want to FOMO into this right now, good freaking luck. That's all I got to say. Good luck to you, because this, in my opinion, is going to come back. It's going to cool off, and it might see, it might take a while for it to cool off, I don't know, but it might see a sharp pullback, maybe down towards I would say a healthy spot $51 50 bucks flat I mean you guys can see over the course of the last couple of months right we pretty much topped out at 50 51 dollars here 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 time and time again so in my eyes that would be a healthy spot for this to cool off at and maybe we can get buyers to come in there but at this point am I buying this heck no guys I'm not FOMOing into it at all from here but I'm going to be watching it, um, you know, either way. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it and made it till the end, let me know in the comments. Smash that like button. Feel free to subscribe. And don't forget to get your free money from Moomoo up to 15 stocks, each up to 2000 bucks, And you might as well get 12 stocks from Weeble while you're at it with any amount deposited. That's linked down below. Check out my Patreon as well if you guys are interested. And with that being said, cheers. I'm going to wrap this, uh, this video up. Relax. Have a nice night. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow in the next video in the morning. I'll see you guys there.